This is Rome. And you know what they say. All the roads of Rome form a graph with 40,720 nodes and 90,648 edges. But what does that actually mean? Let's start with a simpler example. Oh, I know, how about Vatican City? Oh, that's just one road. Hmm, then what about Monaco? Better, but still too many nodes. Ah, I've got it! What about that tiny town in the US which famously has only one resident? Monowi, Nebraska. That's perfect. So Monowi has seven nodes. In a graph of a road network, nodes represent intersections or endpoints of roads. Edges are the connections between the nodes, essentially the roads themselves. But hang on, aren't there 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 edges for Monowi? Well, yes, if we consider that the connection between two nodes only has one direction. But in graph theory, we often count both directions. Unless, of course, it's a one-way street. This is the convention that I will use going forwards. And apparently there are no one-way streets in Monoway, hence it has 20 edges. We can also calculate two more quantities. The graph density, which is defined as the ratio of actual connections to possible connections. For Monoway, the density is 0.4762. That means about 48% of all possible connections between the nodes actually exist. Of course, this number will be significantly smaller for bigger cities. Finally, the average node degree. This is the average number of connections per node. For Monoway is 5.71, meaning each node is involved in nearly 6 connections, so it is connected to 3 other nodes if we don't specify the direction. To get all this data, I am using the OSMNX library in Python, which in turn pulls data from the OpenStreetMap. If we actually take a look of a monoway in OpenStreetMap, we can see that there are a few small roads that were not included in the graph. Also, this main road, as well as this one, were only partially included, just the parts that were connected to the town. If we also look at Google Maps, we can spot a few more differences. This loop over here, that connection there, the extension of this road. Although, if you switch to satellite view, it's debatable whether they should even be considered as roads. In general, accurately mapping every city is incredibly challenging. Tiny roads like gravel or dirt roads can be hard to track, new roads under construction, temporary detours, private driveways, and so on. Nevertheless, for the most part, OpenStreetMap provides a highly detailed and reliable representation of road networks, especially for bigger cities. So let's move on to those. First, I analyze 79 of the largest cities in the world, those with populations exceeding 5 million. But I did say, for the most part, so here are some problems that I encountered. 20 of those cities were Chinese. And when I plotted them, it was evident that we are far less dense than the other cities. After a bit of research, meaning I asked ChatGPT, it turns out that OpenStreetMap doesn't provide a full road network for Chinese cities, only the main roads, so I excluded them. Also, Moscow and St. Petersburg didn't look correct, so I excluded them as well. The rest seemed okay, at least to my eyes. I discovered the next problem when I noticed that besides Tokyo, the city with the most nodes was Riyadh, the capital of Saudi Arabia. Well, it turns out that this is because the map didn't just include the city, it included the entire district of Riyadh. Damn. There are of course other cities that are capitals of districts with the same name, as well as cities that are part of larger metropolitan areas like Tokyo or London. So where do we put the boundaries? Do we include the suburbs or not? Well, my solution was to pinpoint the coordinates of each city center and only consider the roads within a 50 kilometers <laughs> radius. Sure, with this approach, some parts of cities will inevitably be excluded, while areas just outside the city boundaries might be included. 
but I think it is a fair compromise. After all, I'm not trying to identify the city with the most nodes. I already know that this is Tokyo. Instead, within this 15 kilometers radius, the densest city turns out to be Bengaluru in India, followed by Hyderabad, also in India, and then Cairo. Of course, this method isn't perfect. Features like rivers or the sea, which often fall within the circle for many cities, reduce the area available for roads and therefore skew the calculation of node density. But I can exclude those areas, you know? Mm, let me do that. I will be back in a bit. Alright, after excluding areas that aren't part of the city, the results didn't change much. The top three most dense cities remain the same, with Bengaluru leading with 221 nodes per square kilometer. On the other end, Chicago, Atlanta and Toronto are the least dense, with node densities ranging from 31 to 26 nodes per square kilometer. I will not focus on the number of edges since they are closely correlated with the number of nodes. The same applies to graph density or, more specifically, the inverse of graph density. It's the average node degree that I want to focus on, as it is not strongly correlated with the number of nodes and provides a useful measure for categorizing cities based on how well connected their road networks are. So the least connected road network, apparently, is Barcelona's. This came as a surprise to me because Barcelona is well known for its grid system. But when we zoom in on the map, we can see that most of those roads are actually one-way streets. As a result, a node like this doesn't have 8 connections, remember how we defined this measure earlier, but only 4. That's why the average node degree drops to 3.77. And if you are not satisfied with this technicality, you could accept Singapore as a city with the least connected road network, having an average node degree of 3.80. Zooming in on the map, we can see that this is because of the many dead ends. Those roads are definitely not connected enough. But which city has the most connections per node? Which city's network can we call the most complex? Well, it's Khartoum. The capital of Sudan. Let's have a closer look. Yep, that looks complex. I don't see any one-way streets. Sure, there are some dead ends, but not enough to bring the average node degree below 6.26. Here is the full list of all 57 cities. But surely we can do better. Yes, these are amongst the biggest cities, but it is a very small sample. So I calculated those metrics for 10,026 more cities. I chose them at random, big, small, famous, unknown, and after an extensive amount of calculations, I discovered cities with both smaller and larger average node degrees than the ones we have seen so far. Regarding the smaller ones, we still remain in Spain, with Valencia yielding an average node degree of 3.61 and Arcovendas 3.60. I mean, just look at this here. On the other end, the most well-connected city that I could find is San Luis Rio Colorado in Mexico, which is located very close to the US-Mexico border. Wow, what a grid. That's a grid and a half. Take notes, Barcelona, no one-way streets. Finally, with all this data from 10,000 cities, I wanted to explore one last thing. Here I'm plotting each city's population against its number of nodes. You would expect that bigger cities with more nodes also have larger populations, and while that's true to an extent, the correlation wasn't as strong as I had expected. Of course, big cities might sometimes have fewer intersections as they often rely on simpler layouts with narrow streets or pedestrian paths that don't create many additional nodes. Also, as mentioned before, incomplete road network mapping for some cities and variations in how city boundaries are defined could skew the results. But what about your city? How is the road network there? Let me know in the comments. See you next time.